Alan here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made my remote fuel system for my alcohol stove. And basically, it consists of a few less parts than the other uh, YouTube users that uh, show you how they made theirs. And basically, I want to make this clear that I'm not trying to copy or take credit for this here. Uh, this is similar, but it's kind of my own design based on the parts that I picked up and made, but it, there is a lot of similarities, so I just want to make that clear. And basically, most of these parts I got from Lowe's and Hobbytown USA. And for example, what I'm using is these three-quarter inch caps, and the part number is 50157. And they're in the plumbing section at Lowe's by the irrigation outdoor water uh, pipe section. Not the indoor house stuff, but it's in the irrigation stuff, uh, aisle for the outdoor. And basically what I'm using are these little one ounce bottles from REI that have these little white caps. And there's a couple different versions and different ounces. Some are oval, some are round. And uh, basically, these caps fit perfectly down inside the three-quarter inch cap. And uh, basically, uh, first thing, oh, and then the for the fuel inlet on the actual cap, I didn't have any extra the mini uh, fittings to put the fuel line. So what I'm using. It, is from Hobbytown, which the part number, well, the stock number is uh, 127, and it's 1 8 inch by 0.014 brown brass tubing, and it also has metric uh, on the little tag there, and that's what I'm using to make the fuel exit coming out of the cap here. <clears throat> and basically, the first thing I did was you want the tube to lay perfectly flat on the bottom of the cap in here so basically <clears throat> what I did is I cut out a little chunk of the brass tubing to fit in here and I laid it down and held it and then I pushed it against the sidewall to kind of see and then I just went in there and drew kind of like a little line around the top part of it to get an idea of about where I need to drill the hole and then once I had that I pulled the little loose piece that I had laying in there and then I had this little stainless steel wire here and I just bent an L shape there and basically what I did is I heated it up on my alcohol stove so it got real hot and then I carefully went inside try to get as centered as possible on that little circle I made on the inside and I just kind of carefully pressed it against the plastic and it melted it and then had to keep heating it up keep going and eventually it went through to the other side and then that was pretty pretty much close to getting that tube centered so it lay flat against the inner part of the cup there and basically what I did is I cut that anywhere from three quarter to maybe an inch long it's up to you how long uh, I just want to have a little bit inside and however much on the outside and having a little extra on the outside won't hurt. That'll just give you more room and more strength to slip the fuel tubing over it. And even if it's on a little bit, it's snug and it won't come off that you can always push it up to the end if you want. And basically, uh, once I got that small hole poked through with the stainless steel rod thing piece it uh, took a 1 8 inch drill bit and then I just basically drilled through and try to keep the drill bit straight as possible don't go up or down with it or sideways just try to keep it straight as possible and then I took my exacto knife and uh, kind of cleaned all the shavings that it left from the drilling I just kind of scraped it off so it's a nice clean flat surface inside there and then I roughened up the outside here and I also sanded the copper tubing or excuse me brass tubing and then I applied some hobby grade adhesive which you can get at Hobbytown and it's called Zappa Gap 
and it's medium CA, gap filling, works on oily surfaces, bonds virtually anything. It is kind of expensive, but it, I've done a lot of things with this, and it holds really strong. That's eight dollars for that. And I just applied glue on the inside part and around here just to make sure that it's sealed and that thing ain't going anywhere. And then the next thing I did was uh, Dremel has this chain sharpening bit for sharpening the blades. And there's a couple different sizes and I had this one laying around. It does have some wear to it, but it still works for this little project. And uh, basically, almost opposite of the inlet, or excuse me, the exit tube, I applied it to the sidewall. And on this particular end cap, there's a little step down angled shoulder here from that main wall here. And I just basically pressed it against evenly against the sidewall until I got through the thickness of that little extra bit there into this outer wall just a little bit it just needs enough for the air to breathe to make this uh, remote fuel system work because if we don't have that then it won't bubble and feed through the line and that basically made a nice clean little groove in there you don't need too much just need just enough for the air to go past the lid once it's pressed in there and then once I got that to my satisfaction, I just took my X-Acto knife and scraped some of the excess uh, plastic that built up from doing that. Made sure it's all nice and clean. And once that was done, what I did is I took the cap and basically there's this little seal inside. And you just want to carefully pop that out. And if you have a sharp object that's about 3 8 inch diameter that has a sharp edge, uh, just basically put it on a hard surface like a piece of wood and get the center of it. And then, like for example, some of the bullet casings might have the right uh, diameter and just basically set it there and tap it and then it'll cut a nice circle in the middle of that. And then uh, basically with that seal out of there, I did... A, once I found the center I put a small pilot hole to get it started and then I just kept drilling and I kept moving up a drill bit size or two until I got up to 3 8 inch diameter and what I found with the other cap that I did without that seal the alcohol would come up through the threads and then eventually leak out between the bottle and the cap <clears throat> so that's why I did it with the <clears throat> 3 8 inch size drill bit where there's enough for the alcohol to drop down into the cap on the lower portion of it but still allow me to make sure that the bottle when it's screwed in it has a nice tight seal around that gasket there and then once that's done <clears throat> you just basically uh, press this in like that and basically leave a little bit sticking up if you want or you can press it all the way in I kind of prefer just a little bit there just to give me something to bond some glue to and before you actually get ready to push that in just make sure you roughen up the threads not the threads but there's like these little gr finger grip things on the actual cap itself like this one just basically make sure you're roughing that up a little bit and then also this top edge here roughing it up that way when you go to glue it it has something to adhere to and then you just basically apply the glue around this little spot right here just keep and this stuff is kind of runny so you gotta if you do use this type of glue here you want to just be careful not to do too much where you block your little air breather hole hole so you just try to keep it level and just kind of apply a little bit and you can always take something to kind of push it over and kind of where you apply it. And so basically you want to glue it from here all the way to about here and still leave a little bit that it, just in case it won't run and clog your little hole there. And sometimes if you want to, there is a accelerator that you can get also at Hobby Town right there which is called Instaset Accelerator that you spray 
once you after you apply the glue and that will speed up the process of the glue drying and it hardens up real hard so you have to sit there and wait for it to dry <clears throat> and basically you can do that to the all the parts where you glue it and then that basically takes care of that so that now when you screw in the little bottle from REI tight fit and then uh, basically I'm going to pause the video here and I'll be right back okay I'm back um, pretty much I finished up uh, gluing the cap in there so there it is all done with the fuel line you can determine how much fuel line you want uh, to get it away from the actual stove and on this system you want to keep it the, the two on the same level and I'm going to show you another little trick now on my alcohol stove that I made this thing can hold like two ounces give or take maybe a little bit more and this is the fuel system for me a little feed system is going to be to extend my run time for longer cooking now if you have a smaller one that doesn't hold much then that's what's nice about these little f fuel feed systems but if you do have a stove that can run on its own and you do have the little fuel fitting on the side there and you want to use it without that you don't want to leave this exposed that if it starts dripping that that might catch fire from the while this is burning so what I did is I took a little chunk of the fuel line and then I took a small chunk of that same uh, brass tube that I used for the fuel outlet on the remote system and I took some pliers and I mashed down one end of it so it's perfectly flat and I just made sure that it was totally pinched off real tight and then you just basically insert the other end in your little chunk of fuel line like that and then this could be plugged on your inlet on the stove like that and then that just basically blocks it off so nothing can come out of there and catch fire so you can basically use that and safely use it so it doesn't catch and then when you do get ready to use it just basically put your see i made a little snuffer ring for mine and also stores it if i have any extra in there but basically just remove that and then you stick your fuel line on the stove and then you're ready to go and the way this works is basically you have it that way and of course you fill it up and then basically you want to have the air hole which is on the other side of that you want that to go up you don't want to tilt it this way or else alcohol will start dripping out of your air hole so you want to basically tilt it so the air hole is up and you just carefully tilt it like that and then basically still a little bit might come out of there but hopefully not too much and then basically um, you just basically lift this up and then the alcohol will start running down because this is higher than that and then it'll start getting this wet and then once that's wet and saturated you can go ahead and set this down light it and then you'll know if it's working right if this is feeding into there you'll see it bubble once in a while you'll know that that's working and now with my little fuel feed system since I'm using these little bottles from REI they're a little on the soft side so basically you don't want to handle this system by touching this part because you might squish and squirt some out of the air hole or feed that too quick and you'll get a burst of flame there so on mine if you want to copy this little setup that I did you just basically want to grab it from the base of it and do all your movements like that by grabbing that part of it and then same thing setting it down <clears throat> and basically the cost of all the hose and the brass fitting in this piece was very inexpensive probably like maybe seven bucks or less I can't remember I know these little end caps were like 30 some cents each so you might want to get a couple extras if you want to have a couple of these made or if you end up screwing up uh, drilling the hole in the side 
wore that groove in there. It never hurts to have a couple extra until you get the the swing of getting that hole lined up perfectly for the outlet there with the brass tubing. Or if you use the little micro fitting there, same thing you want to keep it at the very bottom of the cap there. <clears throat> and hopefully I didn't miss anything or forget to mention anything. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, please post them. And then if you like the video, rate it. And uh, hopefully to have some more little projects and stuff I could post to spread my knowledge and stuff that I've experienced or messing with. So uh, catch you guys later. Okay, one last thing that I uh, forgot was uh, if you want to use the little micro fuel nipples for your stove and also for the remote fuel system uh, one place you can get them is from towerhobbies.com and uh, basically it's for their a lot of them are used on the nitro engines like on the mufflers and carburetors and stuff so basically something like that uh, you can basically search their website and uh, just type in fuel nipple and then a couple will show up some are unavailable but they do have a couple on hand that you can use and they have all the measurements of the thread pitch and the size of them uh, and that way you can that's one source of getting the actual little nipples if you want uh, I actually had a an old boat engine that I had a couple on that uh, I forgot I had that basically I did as you can see right there I did manage to make one fit the base of my stove by just drilling it out and just kept taking the drill bit just enough around and then I finally got it to actually thread in pretty snug and then I just used a little bit of glue around it to make sure it wouldn't leak. Uh, I'm still going to probably continue to use the uh, little brass tubing f as I make these little f remote fuel uh, feed systems. I'll probably just do that that way it's easier instead of having to order a whole bunch of those little fuel nipples but it's up to you. Uh, just wanted to Add that last little bit and uh, basically I tried out my stove and I had uh, just a little less than an ounce in there and I primed my stove with at least about an ounce and a half two ounces and basically the system works it uh, bubbled every so often as the fuel was burnt off it would bubble and then you can see my little tank there's empty and then I just lifted it up and whatever was in the line is now what's burning in the stove right now along with the rest of the residual alcohol that's left from me priming that and uh, I forgot to also say to initially get the uh, system working you have to kind of lift this up to fill what I did is I unplugged the line from the stove and then I just basically pinched that off and I just lifted the little bottle up to fill up the line and then I plugged it into the stove and then I basically lit it and then I just kind of lifted it one last little bit and then from there it just basically has been self-feeding itself and would bubble once in a while so I knew that it was working and then I just kept watching the level drop and in my fuel I just basically added a little green food coloring so I can actually see the level as it's dissipated. So I just wanted to add that last little bit to my video. So again, thanks for watching. Catch you guys another time.